So next, let's look at migrating our custom CSS. If we look here in our project, we'll see that we had these different CSS sheets from the template in our case. This was from the Unify template where I bought it from HTML stream. I'm gonna to wanna to make changes in here for any classes that refer to the old names. So there may be cases where you're changing correctly your website from image Polaroid to image thumbnail, but you may have overrides in your own CSS, whether it's in your pure custom CSS or in some of your template CSS to use those other names. So we're gonna to wanna to find some of those instances. So if we look at the site.css in our case, we'll see that we're using row fluid as the container of some different elements that we want to be able to change the look of. So I'm going to change these to row because we've gotten rid of row fluid as the name of those elements since that doesn't exist in Bootstrap 3 any longer. In the same way, if we look at the style CSS, we're going to see a number of these as well. So as we go through, we're going to see and search for things that may be specific to the Bootstrap. So we'll see here, there's some carousel changes here that we'll want to make sure match up with Bootstrap 3. Carousel actually didn't change that much, so we're going to leave those alone. And we're going to come down here and look at the pagination. Pagination still exists, so we can leave that alone. If there had been a pagination right in here, we may want to eliminate that or use the new class names. And when we look at this, we're going to find that there's going to be some accordion, even though the template spelled it wrong. I can't leave it misspelled. And there are some classes for the accordion, including accordion group. Now, accordion as a type no longer exists. So we're going to actually want to change all of these that are using accordion. So let's go ahead and make a global change to the new solution, which is panel. And I know this because I've looked at the Bootstrap site and I'm looking at the two different tag names to try to find the ones that I want to change it to. So part of your job in changing your custom CSS is to really deal with changing these names from accordion to panel, from hero unit to jumbotron, etc. You're going to want to go through that list of renamed elements and really find the new elements. When you get into the responsive story, it becomes a little bit more difficult because you could simply change these to the min width in order to make it mobile first responsive here in the style responsive CSS. And that may or may not work. The problem is that your main CSS has overrides that are supposed to work for the desktop version of your website. And it's those rules that need to come into these media queries. So if we look at this media query max width, we can see that we're getting some overrides in here. And instead of just making this min width, because the max width is 480, this should really be the default. And the rules that this is overriding should come in here as a min width 480 so that you're reversing the process. You're taking the default for a mobile device and making it the default look and feel and taking the overrides for larger screens and putting them in min width media queries. So this is actually quite a lot of work to get this right, to start thinking about mobile first responsive web design. So converting your website to Bootstrap 3 is gonna require you go through that effort and it's not a trivial effort. Sure, what we've shown you so far in this module is about search and replace and changing class names, but that's only sort of the tip of the spear. You're also going to want to make sure that the rest of your website is mobile first so that the performance characteristics on these other devices are going to be good. You can cheat and leave this mix of mobile first in Bootstrap 3 and then non-mobile first inside the rest of your site. But until you do the full conversion into mobile first, at times you're going to be fighting yourself about where to make certain changes and how certain changes should appear. So biting the bullet early is often the right thing to do when converting your custom CSS. The CSS that comes with Bootstrap is going to be converted for you. It's really just your custom or template CSS that you're going to need to spend some time with to get right. Let's wrap up this module. 